is fuel for your body, your mind, and definitely your sport. But let's face it, nutrition is confusing and the expectations on girls and women to be thin and have a six pack are exhausting. If you've ever been frustrated with your body, confused about nutrition, obsessed with eating healthy or guilty when you don't, under ate, over ate, or overtrained, and overwhelmed with all the pressure, then this podcast is for you. Nutrition can be easy, you can take control of it, but it might start with letting go of control by asking for help and making a change. I'm Lindsay Elizabeth Cortez, sports dietitian and owner of Rise Up Nutrition, where I empower female athletes to overcome nutrition concerns and perform at their highest level, to stop being confused by all the mixed or harmful messages, and finally have confidence in your body as a fierce, fit, and fueled female athlete. Today's episode is brought to you by Orgain. Ever find yourself rushing out the door to get your workout in, rushing back to shower, and not finding time to prepare a proper recovery meal? This is unacceptable, ladies. And as a listener of this podcast, you know how important recovery is for your performance. And it's one of the reasons that as a registered dietitian, I'm often recommending ready-to-drink nutritional shakes or delicious protein powders to quickly mix up as a convenient recovery option. One of my favorite brands to accomplish this is through Orgain. Orgain is a company dedicated to high quality ingredients to nourish, fuel, and heal your body. Orgain products are certified organic whenever possible, non-GMO, gluten-free, and made without soy. When it comes to sourcing protein, they have both whey-based protein and plant-based protein options. With ready-to-drink shakes, powders, and bars of a variety of flavors, you never have to miss that post-workout recovery again. As an Orgain ambassador and affiliate, you can use my code RISEUP30 for 30% off your first online order. Again, first-time users, RISEUP30 for 30% off. And as a repeat customer and listener of this podcast, you can use the code OA2203 for 25% off all future purchases. Links are in the show notes and codes are there for your reference. Now let's get to the conversation. Hello, fans and listeners. It's Lindsay Cortez, again, your host of the podcast. And today we have Hannah, one of our clients here at Rise Up Nutrition. She just finished the Female Athlete System of Transformation. And she's coming on the show today to talk about her experiences and share her story. I absolutely love when clients come on the podcast because I think they're the most like relatable people to talk to about seeing improvements in their nutrition. So Hannah, thank you for being willing to do this. Thank you for having me on. Yeah. So I think just like a really quick background as to who you are. You are a college student and your sport of choice is running. And you do so recreationally, but quite competitively and have some big goals as well of, you know, continuing to progress with running and, you know, want to someday do a marathon. But prior to doing that, knew that there were some gaps in your nutrition that had to be addressed. So why don't you share with our listeners just, you know, real brief, briefly, not so briefly, but as briefly as you can, kind of what was going on in your life before joining Rise Up Nutrition that made you know that, you know, I I have these gaps in my nutrition and I definitely need help with this. Yeah, I think the biggest indicator that something was going on was I did have a few stress fractures. I think like a while ago, a long time before I joined um, the program, I did like try to eat healthy and I think that that definitely created some problems but you know at the time I I thought that I was like just a very healthy person and that everything I was doing was just you know really healthy and then getting those indicators of a stress fracture is kind of serious and that shouldn't just be something that happens and then a few I guess like a year after my first one I did get another one. And that was when I was like, really just kind of realizing like, okay, I'm obviously not feeling the way that I should. And there's, there are some gaps. And if I want to continue with running, I should really address this and just kind of knew that something wasn't right. And obviously if I wanted to continue running, I needed to address it soon. Yeah, absolutely. I think 
the biggest thing there too is like a re- repeat stress fractures to so close together. You know, yeah, we can get stress fractures for biomechanical reasons or progressing our training too fast, but those are things that you should be able to identify too, and maybe work with a coach or physical therapist and like identify those issues. And then if, you know, connecting those dots with nutrition and then the repeat stress fractures is most likely where, you know, your bones weren't in a great place. They didn't have that foundation of good bone health and bone density to be able to handle the load you were putting on them. So tell us a bit more about what it meant to you back then to eat, quote, healthy, as you just said. Yeah, I think like when everything first, like when I joined running in high school, I did cross country. And my first year, I wasn't really like super into it. And then I think after my first year, I really got like more into running, I guess, even though I had been running for a while by then. And just like seeing like some of the other runners and starting to get like into it, just thinking like, oh, if I want to be like a really good runner, like I don't need to eat sweets or things like that. Like dessert was like one of the main things I remember where it was like, oh, if I want to be like the best and really improve in my running and be a good runner, then I should like not have that and like try to focus on like eating healthy foods, like not a lot of processed foods, just trying to, I guess, like really try to just eat what I thought was healthy. And I know now like that was not good and was like more restrictive. But also when I cut out a lot of those foods, I didn't like replace them with, you know, eating like more of other healthy foods that I, I thought would be healthy. It was just cutting out a lot of stuff, but not like actually then replacing it to make sure I was getting enough too. You know, that's such a good point that when we hear things in our society and culture, like don't eat this or cut that out. One of the reasons it's so restrictive is because we're not hearing what we should be eating, you know? So if I'm not eating ice cream, what should I be eating instead And I say that with an asterisk that like you can eat ice cream and maybe, maybe you should just eat ice cream. However, that, I mean, that's fair of like calories just went way down for you. Like had you replaced that ice cream with graham crackers and peanut butter and Greek yogurt at night, like maybe you would have been okay, but your calorie intake just went way down because you had that restrictive mindset of all the things not to eat, but you didn't focus on what to eat. Exactly. I think it's a lot more prevalent, like knowing what I know now, like what you see on like social media or like ads, anything like that. It's you mostly see what you shouldn't be doing. There's not a lot of like, you know, what you actually should be doing and, you know, what would actually be healthy for you. And I think now it's really easy to realize that. Right. Absolutely. Now, when you finally did come to Rise of Nutrition, I do know that you had worked with a dietitian prior to coming to me and you actually had a decent experience or maybe you can elaborate on that a bit more, but just share, I I think, and we'll get to like how myself and Jenna helped you further, but if you could kind of share what that experience with your first dietitian was like, kind of your first reach out for help and how did that help you and and how, why wasn't it the full solution? I think the first time when I met with a dietitian, it was not something that I thought I needed. And I thought that like, oh, I don't need this. Like I'm healthy. There's nothing wrong. Like I don't need to meet with a dietitian. And I really wasn't really in the mindset of like fixing anything because I didn't think there was a problem. I thought that, oh, like I'm just being healthy. This is like normal. And so I think, and for like, I wasn't injured at that point either. So technically I thought like, oh, like I have no injuries. Like I'm fine. I'm healthy. And then it was once I got the injuries and like the stress fracture, then I realized like, okay, I'm not healthy and I need to try to like improve something. But I think with the first time I just wasn't very like receptive to the idea of getting help. And I think that was probably my fault, but I think just recognizing the problem was the biggest issue. Yeah. And is it fair to say the first time around getting help was influenced by your parents? Yeah, definitely. Like my parents saw that, you know, I had changed my eating habits and like cut a lot of things out and obviously with not eating enough, lost some weight. 
and that concerned them. So they wanted me to get some help, but I just was like, no, I'm being healthy. I don't need help. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I think this is huge because I remember when we did meet, you know, you did share like, yeah, I think since meeting with the other dietitian, like I have increased my portions, but, and, and that was good, you know, it helped to some level, but it is so important for you to be invested in this yourself. And, you know, it's unfortunate that it took repeated stress fractures and injuries for you to make that realization. But at the same time, it's like that personal investment is so, so important. And I say this for a few reasons. I say this first to encourage anybody who's looking for help is like, it's not up to the dietitian or or whatever help it is you're receiving. Like it is up to you. Like how much effort you put into something is going to determine what you get out of that situation, you know? And I think I also say this for the parents because that back at that time you were in high school and there are lots of parents. I know parents who listen to this podcast who, you know, might want this change and transformation for their daughters and their athletes. And it's just not clicking for them yet. And, you know, it's frustrating and I would love to help in that process, but it is something that like you, you do have to come to it yourself or your child, the athlete has to come to that decision that this is something that they want. And so we'll kind of fast forward, like you had, you had the injuries and then you decide, Oh, okay, maybe this is something I need to do. And and what brought you to rise up nutrition? I think like after I got the injuries, I did recognize there was like a problem and I was like, okay, so I need to like, maybe I shouldn't have cut some of these things out. Like I need to eat more. So like I tried to start kind of doing some of that stuff on my own because my mindset was like, oh, like I can fix this on my own. Like I shouldn't have to get help. And then I just like, I did do better and I made some changes. But I think for me, it had been a couple of years and still like, I still knew I had some gaps, like you mentioned, and I knew I wanted to address those, especially with like future goals and wanting to keep up with my running. I knew like, okay, I don't know exactly how to fix this on my own. And I think with Rise Up Nutrition, just seeing that there was like a community of people who were going through some of the same things that I was and specifically how you adjust like sports and how to like also fuel for your sport and like training. I think that was a big factor that I was like, yeah, if I really want to continue with my running, I also need to know how to fuel for it and then be able to like continue my sport for as long as possible. Absolutely. Yeah. That I might still need to fix these gaps that I have right now, but I also need to learn how to take to the next level because I want to keep pushing myself to the next level athletically. Yeah. You know, Hannah, when you did come to us, um, I think when it comes, when it comes to like relative energy deficiency in sport, which is something you resonated with and then disordered eating or for you in your case to like restrictive eating to be more specific with that comes a lot of mindset concerns as well, like our relationship with food and body. Are we scared of certain foods? Are we, do we have a bad perception thinking these foods are bad for me, not good for me, could harm me. And although I think in working together, we were able to tease some of that out. I will say that you came to me actually being in a fairly decent place mentally. You weren't necessarily scared of food and you had accepted all foods can be good. By the time you came to Rise of Nutrition, like the whole thing about like processed foods or ice cream, like you actually were okay with that. You're like, no, I do eat those foods, but you didn't know how to eat for your body. How do I eat enough or right or around my training or for these running goals? Would you agree? Yeah, I definitely would agree. I think mindset wise, I knew like, okay, I need to make these changes or these things like would be good for me. But then I think actually implementing them is where I was kind of struggling or like how to fully like, you know, make those like, I guess, concepts like actually part of my routine and schedule. Exactly. So I think this is really important to bring up because I will just be transparent that I think a lot of people assume that all of our clients really struggle on the mental side. And although some do, and we are here for that, that's not always the case. Sometimes people have a good relationship with food and their body, but they're still not doing it right. They're still not doing what is healthy for their bodies and that it's just not being implemented be it our habits, our routines, our schedules, or or just a lack of knowledge and understanding of what does right really look like. So I think that was you. And so let's fast forward. After the 12-week program, all is said and done. What would you say are your 
personal, like biggest transformations that you experienced? I think that there's a lot. Like, I think how we kind of mentioned while I did like view like all foods are good and like kind of already starting to think about some of those things. Like I wasn't actually really doing it. Like when I first joined, I was still very rigid with like schedules and food. And now I'm a lot more like flexible and I don't have to spend as much time like planning out like what I'm going to have for my meals and like figuring things out. I think it's a lot less like stressful for me. I'm not spending as much time like worrying about food or anything and just still like taking the time to figure out what I need to feel my body. But it's like not always my main concern and not having to constantly be worried about it. That's I think that's one of like the big things and like the food flexibility, but also just a lot of like knowledge and information on like how to be feeling because I think it was kind of like I knew what I was doing was wrong, but like how do I fix it? Like what do I actually need? Like if I'm going to go for a run, what should I be before? What should I eat after? Things like that. It's like maybe not as common, but could be more specific to your sport. That's I think really helpful to be like informed and intentional with like your choices. For sure. And there's a difference between having intentional nutrition and an all-consuming attention on nutrition, right? So I think in the past, you had this very all-consuming attention on it, like a hyper-focus, like it stressed you out, so much time planning. And now it's it's not as stressful, but you still have intention because you don't want to have those gaps. You want to be fueling your body right, but it's a lot less stressful and you're a lot more confident in how to do it. And, and I think this is where like in the female athlete system of transformation, what we do is weekly coaching. You had one-on-one sessions direct with Jenna, our lead nutrition success coach, or direct with me. And so every week we could kind of like, especially with our pre and post-workout fuel, I know that was something very specific for you that every week we kind of like challenged you on that and try different things. And so it's, you learn what do I need and okay, our carbohydrates, but then we actually were able to implement it with different foods and combinations and give you ideas and, and watch you actually do it and try it week to week. So that implementation piece that you were really missing was there. Yeah. I think for sure, like the guidance and the help of like, okay, like what can I do like better or what do I actually need to do is something that I think it would have been extremely hard for me to do on my own just because like, I didn't know it. Like, I don't know as much about like nutrition and all of those things. And a lot of like the healthy things that we see online are what was like actually like hindering me from actually fueling properly. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Hey fans, I hope you are enjoying this conversation so far and we'll be back to it in just a moment. But first, I want to pause and let you know that this episode is brought to you by the Female Athlete System of Transformation, aka the fast track to overcome disordered eating and use food as fuel to perform at your highest level. The Female Athlete System of Transformation is my unique program and proven systems to guide female athletes to understanding and implementing the proper nutrition for their sport, life, and health. Myself and my team of registered sports dietitians work one-on-one with clients to address their unique needs and counsel them through the nutritional and behavioral changes needed. Many female athletes who resonate with disordered eating, mental guilt around food and body, relative energy deficiency in sport or female athlete triad, amenorrhea, repeat injuries due to negligent nutrition, or frankly, just a lack of knowledge and understanding on their fueling needs have seen incredible success in the fast track. After years of working as a sports RD, I've compiled the most effective ways for female athletes to learn nutrition, be supported, be challenged, and ultimately find their success with fueling as fast as possible. So don't wait another day. Get to your goals faster by joining the Female Athlete System of Transformation. Look in the show notes or head to the website to book a free call and learn more. Okay, now let's get you back to the conversation. Enjoy. So, you know, it's hard. I think you mentioned already like flexibility. That was a huge transformation for you. But it's also hard when we think about things like injury of being like, that was your light bulb of like, I'm having these injuries. 
So, you know, and it's coming from my lack of nutrition. And so it's hard to always say like, well, this program was successful because I no longer get injured. Like, well, that's really, that would be a really hard conclusion to make because it, um, especially with bone health, this is a 12 week program and bone health does take more than 12 weeks to really heal. And also as athletes, like we get, we get injured for other reasons too. So how would you sort of define success in a program like this? Or how did you define it for yourself? I think when I got to like the end, looking back on how far I had come, like being able to just like, I was like, oh my gosh, like I haven't been spending as much time like worrying about food or like now it it doesn't, I don't like get so focused on what I'm going to have for lunch or like for dinner or making sure it's healthy, like not having to like not having to spend as much time. I think that was like a big thing. And not only just like the focusing on food, I think I just felt stronger also just like based on my feeling that I had been doing like when I run and just like in everyday life, like I just, it's hard to describe, but I just feel like stronger. And I think it's like now, like just being kind of free, I guess, and not having to worry so much about it. And it's like, I can focus on other things and knowing that I have like a healthy relationship, even though my mindset was kind of like in the right place before I joined, like now, like my actions and my mindset are kind of like lined up. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love how you just said that. That was a perfect way of saying it. Yeah. Your actions are, are displaying what you were thinking and feeling. And now your actions are lined up with that, which is awesome. Yeah. You were just in a disconnect before you knew what was right, but we weren't doing it. And now, now you know what's right. You know even more about what's right than you did before and you're actually doing it. So that gives you so much more confidence, right? And I think that's where when we say like, how how can I not stress around food and stuff? It's having confidence in what you're doing and, and being able to do it on your own as well. Obviously the 12-week program was like, I mean, you were doing it on your own because this is virtual, but like, you know, you had your weekly sessions and check-ins and, you know, we were really guiding you in it. But like, Now at the end of it, like you're doing it on your own now. And that's what gives us confidence. And that's when it's not stressful. So, yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of times also change can be pretty stressful too. Just like, I like to have a schedule. I've always kind of been that way and like being with like a routine or just always doing the same thing. So breaking that can also be kind of hard and like doing a lot of the challenges or like you know, what, like you and Jenna would suggest, like that could be stressful sometimes in a way that it's like new or different. But I think in the end, it's like, you realize like, oh, that shouldn't have been very stressful. Like, and it kind of shows like how far you've come when those things aren't as stressful anymore. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So did you have a favorite aspect of the program that you would like other people to know about, or maybe something that like, surprised you something you didn't realize when you signed up that you were going to benefit from um two things come to mind I think first would be like the community I really enjoyed like just being surrounded with a lot of other girls who they could relate to you because I think a lot of times you might feel like you're alone or like oh why is this so hard for me when everyone else like can just you know do whatever it doesn't bother them and so being with a lot of other girls who like could understand what you were going from and going through and like support you. I think that really helped like with the team talks and getting to like hear from everybody and like sometimes hearing like somebody's struggling with something that you are too. It made you feel like you're validated, I guess, like you're not alone. I think that really helped. And just also, I think the support from you and Jenna was very unique because you guys would still like reach out to us like all the time you could message you it was like very supported so even though some things might have been very challenging or hard it was like you could you felt supported the whole way Mm -hmm. yeah no that's that's awesome to hear and I think that the community aspect does shock a lot of people because I think 50% of people are scared by it and are not really into the whole group thing. They're like groups. No, <laughs> like, or, or these are really personal things. Like I don't want to share it with other people. And I swear nine out of 10 clients by the end of the program, that's one of their favorite aspects. You know, and the reality is a lot of female athletes struggle 
at some point in their life with nutrition, fueling body image, you know, somewhere, somewhere on that spectrum. And for those who don't, wonderful. And like, that's amazing because, you know, if you're not struggling, that's awesome. You're, you're, you know, that, that role model that, that somebody like you, Hannah, now are right after going through this, you're that role model for other people who might be struggling. But when you're in it, like, I just want people to know that you're not alone. Like, I'm not giving an excuse to it because it's not a good situation, but to know that and that's, it's somewhat common, right? It's common enough that you are not alone. You are not isolated. Other people have shared and similar experiences and other people have overcome this and gotten better and gotten stronger and gotten better at their sport and been role models and female athlete fueling. And you can be that too. Right. And I think that's exactly what our community is like as the dietitian and business owner of the situation. I remember being really nervous to start the group aspect. Like when I, I don't know if you know this, Hannah, but when I first started the fast program, there was not a group aspect to it because I really wanted to respect people's like privacy. And also because to be frank, you get too many people with weird wonky food things going on together in a room and it just feeds off each other. Right. And I'm sure you can imagine that. Right. So I was like, no, this could be a bad situation. Well, in time, as I continued to work with clients in the fast track, I was like, man, like, I really want you to meet this other client. Like you two would get along or like, you're not alone. And it's one thing to hear it from myself or from Jenna to hear like, oh, you're not alone. But then to actually see it, you know, and really feel that makes a difference. And what I personally made an effort to do, and I think has been successful, you can let me know, Hannah, is to make sure that our group sessions are not these like complain, vent, or give bad ideas to each other sessions. Like our group calls are very positive and fueling focused and win oriented. What are our wins? How are we overcoming this? And like, yes, we can validate our struggles, but here's our, our solutions and our focus and our goals to overcome this all together. Like, right. Would you agree with what I was saying? Yeah, I think for sure. Especially like if you don't feel like if there's something you don't want to say or talk about, like you don't have to, you're, it's not like it's required. Like you can share as much as you want, but it's also nice to sometimes be like, Oh, like, has this ever happened? Or like, I'm kind of struggling with this or like to ask people's advice, like, Oh, what do you do or something? And you can have like the feedback or people be like, Oh yeah. Like I, that used to be something I struggled with. This is what I did. Or like, here's what I do. I think that's really helpful because you can get like feedback and like see in real time, like other people have like overcome some of these things. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So it's so empowering, I think. And it's, you know, the group aspect is so great because just like when you are, you know, training with other people, you have your team, you have your running buddies, you know, and you might have a coach, like you just, you have your people and we want to be that for you. We want to be your nutrition team, not just your dietitians, but that like full team to feel supported and part of something and part of something that's really positive and empowering. So I think that's, it just like you said, something that was like a surprising benefit is that community aspect. And I'm really glad that you felt that as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm I was actually like a little bit like surprised as to how much like usually I'm kind of like more of a quiet person. I was like, Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna wanna like share a lot or like, you know, yeah. if things are gonna be too personal, but like I immediately felt like very like welcome and just like I could share like what I was going through and like other people would like understand and like be very like open and like supportive. Yeah. You were really open. Even our call last night, you were super open. So that was (laughs) awesome. Yeah. So you might surprise yourself to any listeners who think that they might not, you might surprise yourself when you're in the right environment, the best of us comes out, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Hannah, if there are other athletes listening that resonate with you at all of like having these repeated injuries, feeling like, no, I have a good relationship with food, but like, I'm just not, I just don't think I'm doing it right. Having gaps or like just feeling stuck with their nutrition, like nothing's really changed for a few years. What advice would you give to them? I think I would say like, first, it's okay to ask for help. Like 
sometimes I know I felt like, oh, like this is something I should just know, or like I should be able to do this on my own. But like, it's okay to ask for help. And like, it's okay if you don't know what to do, because that's why there are people who do know what you should be doing. And I think that can be kind of hard or scary too. But also, I know for me, like change was pretty hard. And like, that's what I was also like worried about too. Or sometimes you might be like, oh, I, I don't have time for that. But I think you have to like make time for something that's so important when, especially if you're like thinking there might be a problem, you probably do know that there is. And so you have to like make time for that. And even if it's going to be hard or scary, like it's going to be worth it in the end. And you'll be really glad that you actually did it. Yeah, I think it's really good advice. Just that, that if you think you might have a problem, then there's something there, right? And it's it's worth giving yourself the time and space and tools to figure that out. Because otherwise, it just continues to grow and build and worsen. So yeah, and there, I feel like a lot of times you always be like, oh, I'll fix that like later. Like, I don't have time to fix that right now. For me, I know that was something I always kind of thought was like, oh, like, well, I'm working on it. I like, Mm-hmm. over time it'll get better and it's like if time keeps going by and it's really not it's like you just have to address it and it'll probably be hard but it, it's really worth it and like, you need to like make the change for you yeah and and you know this is exactly why I call it the fast track right my little acronym because like people do delay these things and put it off and I'll get better eventually 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 like you said too like it had kind of been a few years for you already something that started in high school, you're in college now, and it just it had been a few years and you, it wasn't really getting better. And so it's like, you know, I think we can address where you're at now, but like 12 weeks, like give yourself 12 weeks to invest 100% and actually make a darn change, you know, and not let this drag out for another three years. Right. And, and that's kind of our intention behind it is like as fast as possible, because otherwise you're going to keep delaying, say, I'll get there someday. It's like, no, the time is now and let's do it fast. <laughs> we don't have to worry about this again. And I'm sure that some of our listeners might want to hear directly from you, Hannah, like, are you really that much better in just 12 weeks? Was it really that fast? Like, what would you say to that? I would say, yes, it's extremely like you might be extremely surprised how big of a difference it can make and how you can just feel like very different. and. I mean, I was very scared of like change too, because I mean, I don't think many people like change, but like, that was a big thing for me. I was like, oh, like, it's going to be really hard. And like, yeah, it is, but it's so worth it at the end because like, you don't want to always have like these problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't always want to have these problems. So it's worth it when you can get a huge chunk of them out of the way as quickly as possible. Yeah. Now, so so you really did make a huge transformation in 12 weeks. You're doing so much better. And I do want to highlight the fact that you did decide to join our alumni program. And it was one of those decisions, though, of like, I'm actually feeling pretty good on my own. You know, the intention is let's invest 100% into these 12 weeks to be good on your own. So for you, Hannah, what was kind of your reasoning to say, but I want to continue in some way, shape or form, like the alumni program? I think for me, I also really enjoyed learning about like how to feel properly and like knowing for my sport, like all of those things. I found that very interesting and I wanted to keep learning because I know like I still can keep improving. And I think like even though like I finished the program, there's still like areas I can work on. I can always like do better. And especially with like wanting to reach future goals in running, I think still being able to have that community aspect and like continue to learn about like fueling. I think that was what really made me want to join. For sure. Yeah. I try and teach you girls as much as I can in 12 weeks, but the reality is like nutrition is a science. There's new science coming out every day. Right. And also like, yeah, I have years of experience and knowledge. Can't teach you everything in just 12 weeks. And so that's what the alumni program is, is like, you're good. You are putting in place everything that you learned, your mindset and your actions are lined up. And then this is how you can continue to make those small tweaks and improvements or check in before race day, or we want to do a new training program, check in before that and just kind of keep learning, right? It's something that keeps you 
I think really in the loop and accountable and to have such an, a force of fierce fit and fueled female athletes to do that with your team behind you is exactly what the alumni program is for. You know, you've accomplished so much, Hannah. I know myself and Jenna are so proud of you and all that you've accomplished. And we're super excited to keep working with you, even though we have confidence you can do it on your own. We're really excited to kind of keep coaching you on your journey. I'm very excited to keep like learning and also to have the community still. I was not ready to say goodbye yet. I know. Goodbyes are so hard, so you don't have to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Well, any any last words? I feel like we covered a lot on this episode. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Hannah, for being willing to share your story and help other female athletes out. And yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed it. I really hope you enjoyed that episode and thanks for listening. But before I let you go, I have free resources that you can have access to right away, right now, so that you can start fueling your body as a fierce, fit, and fueled female athlete. First, I have your Red S recovery race. If you've ever wondered if you might be struggling with Red S, curious to learn more, or know you have Red S and are looking to recover fast, then you can head to www.riseupnutritionrun.com slash red S and download the red S recovery race. See how you place and figure out the next steps to recovery. Plus while there, I have a few other great resources for you, including three nutrition secrets that every elite athlete swears by and access to our private Facebook community, female athlete nutrition. So again, to gain access to all of this, head to riseupnutritionrun.com slash red S that's backslash R E D S. And you can gain access and get the help you need fast. Too many girls and women and female athletes struggle with nutrition, but you don't have to any longer become fierce, fit and fueled links in the show notes, and I'll see you next time.